so I would like to start. Uh, Package Dashboard is a project that uh, members of our team are working on for uh, roughly two and a half years. And uh, I'm Frenchik Zatloukal. Uh, I'm working on backend side. Jonas Kladanka is leading uh, the project, and Lukáš Brabec is, uh, is working on front end. So, uh, uh, Package Dashboard started uh, by idea of uh, Miro Hrančok in uh, late 2019, and he sent an email uh, as uh, uh, pitching up the idea of uh, something like package dashboard that would uh, provide some uh, support for federal packagers, uh, not only Red Hatters, but also members of community. Uh, this is uh, how his proposal looked like. And, uh, goals, were, uh, goals of the package dashboard are to aggregate uh, data from multiple sources, uh, like Bugzilla, Koshe, Koji, and uh, many more, and display them in condensed, uh, condensed way so package, package maintainers uh, are able to have over, overlook and overview of uh, issues and uh, information about their packages. Uh, <clears throat> so the main goal is to make a life of packager easier uh, because uh, uh, Fedora Fedora needs, uh, needs to support their packagers because they are making the distribution happen. Uh, <clears throat> the backend side is, is based on uh, uh, Flask and Celery libraries. Uh, Flask is a web development framework, web server, and, and many, many more. And uh, it's written in Python, obviously. And we are using Celery for massive parallelization of uh, backend tasks because we are fe fetching lots of data and I'll get a little bit more to that in, uh, in a moment. And uh, the service backend and both frontend is deployed in uh, OpenShift cluster of federal infrastructure and frontend is written in React. Uh, bunch of implementation details. Uh, we basically have two types of data. Uh, one, the first type is uh, like we are fetching all the data for all the packages and uh, then we are processing them and parsing them and finally showing them to, to, to users. And the other type is uh, a more complicated one and that's a type that uh, we are fetching only for some packages because uh, fetching all the data will be too, too slow to handle because, uh, for example, Bugzilla, and I will get a bit more to that uh, in, in a minute, is, is very slow for fetching all the bugs for all the federal packages. So we are basically looking at uh, who accessed the package dashboard in last 14 days and uh, storing packages of that user and caching, uh, caching that from Bugzilla, caching only that from, from Bugzilla. And <clears throat> if somebody new access, uh, opens the package dashboard, the first visit uh, will take uh, a little bit more time to load because uh, it will show some data and uh, those, uh, the data that are already in cache and the data that are uh, missing in cache because uh, the user didn't visit package dashboard at all or didn't visit it in last 14 days, it will be fetched and dynamically loaded into, into his dashboard. Uh, I would like to give some examples. Uh, this is the first thing that's, that's new, new from last presentation about the package dashboard. And uh, these are the projects that are now using, using Oraculum, which is a backend for, for package dashboard. Uh, the, if, if you open this git or a Pajor repository for some RPM package, you usually see the uh, version table uh, that shows up all the versions for, for all federal releases for open package. And uh, the data that you are seeing is fetched from Oraculum. Uh, there are a bunch of fallback paths be because uh, some, some data aren't, aren't in cache blob. Uh, we are getting the data from uh, repository metadata and combining them with, uh, with body, uh, body information. Uh, 
Uh, the other other thing that uh, that's using uh, uh, Oracle is Fedora Easy Karma, uh, which is a tool. If you don't don't know about it, you can if you have updates testing repository enabled, uh, you can uh, launch the tool and uh, give Karma to packages that you have from updates testing uh, in a faster way than doing it manually from body. And uh, the Fetching data from body was uh, too slow and uh, not not robust enough. So our team that is developing the tool decided to use Oracle, which is caching all the data from body for all the packages. And the other thing that's using uh, using package dashboard, and I'll uh, get to API demo later, uh, is Test Cloud, uh, and it's using it for easily fetching all the Fedora releases, uh, like these are currently supported releases and uh, are we in freeze or not, uh, what is the raw height version, and, and so on. And uh, the last thing I would like to mention is uh, uh, we have a special meta user uh, who is called Orphan, and it's showing all, all the Orphan packages and not only direct orphans, but also indirect orphans. So if your package is affected by something orphaned, uh, you will see the dependency graph uh, in package dashboard if you open orphan user. And uh, something that I would like to mention that uh, were completed since uh, last DevConf talk, uh, the bold items are the ones that were completed since Nest talk, which happened in summer. And uh, I would like to focus only on those. Uh, as I've said, Bugzilla is very complicated uh, to use as a data source for a vast number of packages. So we have implemented a uh, hacky workaround how to, how to make it faster a bit. Because even with our 64 accelerator, accelerator workers, uh, it wasn't fast enough. And uh, Sync was uh, getting behind, and infra, if infra wouldn't give us like thousands of uh, uh, <coughs> pods in OpenShift cluster. So uh, the workaround for that was uh, that we are doing only, only partial refreshes for Bugzilla data every hour. And we are doing full refreshes every, uh, once every 24 hours. Because uh, <coughs> the difference between partial and full refresh is that uh, partial refresh includes only changes in bugs uh, in uh, interval from last sync and current, current time. And this data, unfortunately, doesn't include information about closed bugs in that interval that they are missing in, in report. So once bug gets closed, it might, not get, it might not appear immediately there. The other thing that was problematic is if some bug moved to other package and due to nature of Bugzilla, which I'm, I don't have time to get too much into right now, uh, we can't get that data in a faster sync Sync manner, and uh, the thing I would like to show you a bit uh, a bit later uh, is uh, the big big new thing that we have completed in in last uh, last few months, and this is a custom dashboard builder, uh, which you can use to create your own dashboards combined from packages from multiple packagers uh, or explicitly listed packages or packager groups. I would like to show you uh, mainly, mainly the new uh, package, uh, custom package dashboard builder and uh, how it looks. And this is basically it. You can uh, remove or add users to it. And it will use packages from these users, these groups, or you can explicitly list packages that you want to show. So I'll also we have implemented um, uh, autocomplete. Uh, it can get a bit, a bit slow for some, some packages, like uh, if you type in Python dash something, it probably won't load here. Yeah. And uh, add myself. And you basically can save the changes and load your new customized dashboard. Uh, or you can uh, you can use uh, 
convenience button to uh, just share, share a link with uh, your coworkers or other packagers working on similar projects so you don't have to create a packager group for anything. You can build your own package dashboard and share it with your team or colleagues. And I would like to get to API demo. Uh, we have a bunch of API endpoints. Uh, we don't have uh, API documentation ready yet, but uh, you can uh, experiment yourself uh, just by uh, typing in slash API to the uh, package dashboard URL. Uh, but I would like to show you a bunch of uh, endpoints that you might be interested in. And let me check what's there. Uh, yeah, the. <coughs> So uh, this is the endpoint. Uh, can you see the text there, or is it too too small? Uh, this is the endpoint to. Uh, to uh, easily and in a fast manner get uh, package version uh, package versions for all Fedora releases for a specified package. And uh, you see, I'm uh, I'm fetching versions for package Firefox, and the dashboard will return you uh, JSON that you can you can use in your scripts and tools. And uh, it, the API for all the examples I'm showing here is guaranteed to be stable, and you can you can rely on that, and it will return data for whatever you need or want, and you don't have to fight with uh, MD API or any anything else. Uh, the other convenience API that uh, we are using internally in Oraculum, and uh, we've uh, felt that uh, there isn't such an easy way to fetch all Fedora releases that are currently supported, what is raw height, and so on. And uh, we had requests to expose that API too, so we can easily hopefully fetch. Uh, and you will get JSON response uh, of all the Fedora releases that are currently supported. Uh, this will be a bit complicated with uh, this, this resolution size, but uh, this is actually the uh, API endpoint, endpoint for the package dashboard, dashboard itself. And you can fetch all the data that uh, package dashboard is displaying you in a convenient manner. And this is the only thing that uh, have recently changed. And th there is also there is an point at API slash v1. And don't use that. It will be removed soon. And th th there is API friendly error message that you should stop using that. I'm showing you the API slash v2 format. And this is basically everything that package dashboard shows you and, uh, for the specified user. Uh, I've shown you for uh, Lukash Brabets, and you can combine, as in custom frontend, you can combine a bunch, bunch of users, groups, and packages. So if, if I show you, for example, I can combine it like this. And you can, you can use the data, yeah, it's <laughs> not very readable. Uh, but it's, it's just a JSON standardized format that uh, we promise will, we won't break famous last words. So this is the API demo. Uh, we are working on uh, writing API documentation and we'll announce it on standard Fedora channels once, once it's completed. And uh, finally, I want to talk about some of our plans uh, for for near future. Uh, we are still exploring options for downstream usage. 
Uh, we are working on fed message listener, which should uh, help us with uh, uh, getting data in a faster manner. Uh, API, API documentation is something I've already mentioned. Uh, we are planning to uh, rewrite, or at least uh, look into rewriting uh, package what tool. If you if you have ever used that, it's a terminal C CLI tool to fetch the inform fetch information about package from your terminal. And the tool is deprecated and it's no not longer working. And we found out that uh, our backend or Acrum is uh, providing almost all the data that package what tool used, or at least the most important ones. Uh, we are looking into supporting package review use case for package dashboard, uh, which is uh, something that we've been asked to do, but uh, this will require some rework of our backend and uh, rethink of a bunch of things and uh, refactoring of stuff we are doing. And uh, also we are finishing uh, QE landing page deployment, which is the a prime, prime, which was the primary motivation for our backend uh, before uh, we have worked with, worked with Miro Hranchog on uh, package dashboard, which would be something like hub for testing Fedora, showing what's needed to be tested and, and so on. Uh, this is the link to Fedora package dashboard. Uh, if you would like to uh, explore some testing stuff, you can uh, add dot, uh, .stg before Fedora project. Uh, we are planning to deploy the custom dashboard feature early next week, and we will announce it once, once, it done, once it's done. Uh, also, if you would have some, re uh, some requests, uh, ideas, and improvements, uh, you can uh, create tickets or pull requests at these URLs. Oracle is our. Uh, backend and package dashboard is our front end. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you showed that uh, it should be possible to uh, watch more packages uh, than I own. Is that already in production? No, no, it will be in production. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, the feature that you can add uh, multiple packages or multiple person, uh, persons if it's already in production. And no, it's not yet. We are planning to deploy it early next week. Uh, we are still working, working out some issues. And uh, the uh, front-end developer, uh, Lukáš Barbec, uh, especially, especially asked me not to show a live demo. And I did exactly that. Nothing crashed. So. <laughs> So the question is, um, the release is an API endpoint you showed. Um, how tightly is following the actually um, uh, oh. the actual federal branching and uh, releasing cycle? Uh, so, sorry, can you try it louder? I, I'm uh, yeah. So. Uh, how tightly the release endpoint uh, you showed, the API endpoint, is actually um, following the Fedora branching um, things. Like when Fedora is branched, mm -hmm. does that endpoint immediately show that it's branched or the new Yeah, yeah. The, the, the endpoint, uh, I can show you a bit more uh, after the talk here. Uh, the endpoint uh, distinguishes a uh, bit um, if it's branched or not branched yet. Uh, I'll show you if, if you have time uh, after the talk how, how it looks. Thanks. Is there a plan for uh, Git, uh, GitLab support? Uh, this is something uh, we'll be uh, looking into uh, depending on uh, how much uh, man hours we will have to, to uh, give to package dashboard because this is something that uh, would be interesting uh, j for now just for downstream and uh, plans for Fedora to move to GitLab aren't uh, yeah, set in stone yet but uh, if it happens we'll obviously have to have to add support for that uh, or if we will have time and resources to work on downstream we'll also work on GitLab support. <laughs> 